making more progress now, yes, dear, we're making more progress now, yes, dear, we're making more progress now, still have a long way to go. They promise to bring us more revenue and quality, promise to bring us more revenue and quality, promise to bring us more revenue and quality, Princeton is now on its way. Yes, dear, we're making more progress now, yes. Hello everybody, this is Brian O'Haran again on August 28, 2008, again a very nice day outside. Uh, this is the third Highland Lake special for the summer and the last, trying to get this in before Labor Day uh, festivities and people leave uh, the lake to go back to their homes in other states, other parts of the United uh, country and, uh, and other uh, places in Connecticut. Um, tonight. Uh, it's kind of sad for me because I'm in the, uh, I received some news this week that uh, two of my former, um, uh, not classmates, but uh, mates in school um, have passed away this week. Uh, brought back many pleasant memories. Uh, there were two very caring and compassionate women, friends throughout uh, my early years in school. Kathleen Ann Murphy from Torrington, Connecticut, passed away in Tampa, Florida. She was involved in many social activities as well as had a large family and uh, many grandchildren. And Marcia Jean Giovanni Stritt. She's right here in Connecticut, I think uh, over near Hartford in that area. And um, she was married to, and still was married till her death, to Charlie Stritt who was a very, very good football player at Syrac Syracuse and played on the same team with Jimmy Brown. So my condolences to the families of both those ladies, and uh, they sure contributed while they were here. Tonight, the first settler uh, was Caleb Beach, first settler of Winchester. I don't have a picture of Caleb Beach, but I'm going to try to find one. It goes way back a long way, 1700, so it's kind of hard to find pictures of those people. Sometimes you can get a drawing here or there, but he was the first settler in Winchester, and uh, his um, fireplace, chimney and fireplace, from his uh, cabin is still down in Winchester right next to the historical building outside, uh, and um, it's still there to this day. They moved it from wherever his cabin was some years ago. So that was Caleb Beach. He was the first uh, settler, and I guess he ran the place <laughs> since he was the only one around. The first warden in Winchester, and you should see a picture of the first warden, was William Phelps. 
in the year 1858. Mr. Phelps was a businessman and president of the Hurlbut Bank. Mr. Phelps is pictured here today uh, for the introduction to this program. I'm now going to go through the agenda quickly and I'll make some more comments. The agenda today Idle Lake Special Number 3, August 28, 2008, will be a few of some comments, mainly about the, uh, a bit about the history of the mayoral forum here. One one brief notice, a brief uh, mention of the budget, and then I'm going to talk about selectmen. From 205, 207. Select them from 207, 209, and I think I also added in there before the 205, 207, after the agenda was made, the uh, class of 203, 205. So I'll talk a bit about them as well. I do want to talk a bit about the mayoral history of uh, Winchester, uh, the town manager history of Winchester, and the progress to date of the latest board of existing board of selectmen. So we're back to the comments now, and you will see a picture of our special guest tonight for the rest of the show. His name is William C. Kemp, the first mayor and first selectman of the town of Winchester in 1931 to 1933. I think he was actually a warden before that for about eight or nine years, but that's when they first uh, decided to have the mayor selectman form of government. Uh, in 1931 and he passed away in 1933. He died in office and was succeeded by an interim Mr. Lyman P. Case for a short period of time and then Mr. Robert E. Maher. Mr. Kemp was the first of seven mayor selectmen from 1931 to, until 1962. When the town selectman, town manager form of government began as a result of a charter change. The first mayor after the, the charter change was our own Anthony so, uh, Canabo. And the first town manager was Jack S. Branham. The selectman town manager form of government is still in place in Winstead today. The present Board of Selectmen ran on a platform that included possibly giving the electors the opportunity to change to a mayoral form of government early in their administration. Early in their administration, they voted five to two to establish a charter revision commission of five members to consider changing the charter to a mayoral form of government. The commission recommended that the town change to a mayoral form of government, four votes in favor, no votes against, and one abstention. And the selectmen recently voted in favor, five to two, you can guess how that was divided, of passing the recommendation to referendum in the form of three questions yet to be determined. I think they have 45 days to determine, de determine the exact questions they're going to ask uh, at, at the uh, referendum. To be placed on the ballot to be voted on during the November 2008 national election. Part of the reason they want to make it the national election is because that's when you get a lot of voters out and the most people uh, will be there to make their decision and I think you also need 15 percent of the voters that vote to vote in uh, uh, in favor but I'm not exactly positive about that but anyway there will be a natural uh, Nat, nat, uh, an election, and um, there will be three questions on the ballot uh, for people to answer. If chosen by the voters, the first May oral election under the new form of government, if there is one, will be chosen in the November 2009 election. So these selectmen will finish out their term, and if we change to a mayoral form, which uh, only the voters will be will tell us in November, a few months away, uh, then uh, a mayor will be chosen next time around, and and uh, finance board and um, uh, five selectmen um, for 
finance board people. So I'll go over that a lot more in future programs, but I'm not going to do that too much tonight because I want to show you the events that led up to this whole thing. So get prepared, citizens, to run for mayor if you choose, finance board, or selectmen if the mayoral form of government is chosen. Tonight I will discuss briefly the last and current board of selectmen and their very different philosophies. Winstead has a population, I got this off the website, I can't guarantee it's exact, exact, but it's close. Uh, the population on the website says we are 11,500 people. We were once a large industrial power of over 80 factories. And then some of them were pretty well known around the world. Did all kinds of things here. If you read the history books, uh, the annals and the, uh, and the second history book uh, by uh, the Mars, you will you'll see very interesting. It's a little bit dry reading, but there's a lot of good information in there. I recently just gave it to a new resident to read both copies of the history. Greatly powered by Highland Lake. A lot of these factories were powered by Highland Lake. And, uh, and the water was uh, used to drive these water wheels that powered the lake. And a lot of th that's why you see a lot of these factories along the river and along, around the lake. Actually, there is an industrial zone right at the, when you go right up to the lake by the two, uh, uh, by the two uh, spillways. So that is actually still to this day zoned industrial in some parts of it. The 1955 flood, which my son teases me about a lot, caused major damage in this town. It basically wiped out one whole side of the road down there on Main Street. The flood caused a significant loss to the property tax base because a lot of the buildings that were there were gone after the flood and didn't pay taxes, property taxes anymore. Some were moved to other areas of the town. I guess some never made it back, but uh, there was, uh, uh, people do tell me that there was a loss there on, to the tax base. Over the years, there's also been a decline of industrial power here. There aren't 80 factories here anymore employing about very skilled uh, craftsmen and artisans um, and machinists and everything else. We were one of the best in the States in the early days. The loss of the railroad access. Somewhere along the line when I was in high school or maybe a little before or after, you know, the railroad stopped coming this way. And I guess because of the, the infrastructure of the roads and the loss of the industrial uh, base right up through the valley, uh, it wasn't probably profitable for them to come here anymore. Um, we have had financial difficulties ever since. As I showed on one of the other um, Highland Lake specials. We kind of this town kind of breaks even every year, where our, our um, revenue from additional taxpayers is not going up at the rate we need it to go up to up maintain our infrastructure and to supply the, the wants and needs that the town has. <coughs> Pardon me. We are falling behind in repairs and we're falling behind in, in growth of most things in Winchester and Winstead. Our infrastructure needs expensive attention, and that includes Highland Lake over the years, not right away, but it does, does need money now, and it will need more money in the future if things keep going the way they're going up there. And uh, the town needs money now, millions and millions of dollars, because its infrastructure was let go over the years because of the uh, lack of the, this, the, this revenue infusion and uh, people b uh, leaving the area, not, not just residents, but businesses. The major elected officials in Winchester are seven selectmen under the existing charter, one town clerk that's elected. Some places appoint town clerks. We elect our town clerk and this year the town clerk ran unopposed because she does such a good job. And nine board of education members. The selectmen are in charge of policy and they are also the finance board. If the new mayoral form 
is implemented that there will be five selectmen instead of seven and the finance board will be four people se a separate finance board elected finance board one of the things I noticed at the public hearing the other night was that most people who came, and there weren't many, maybe 20 people, hadn't really read the charters and didn't really understand how a mayoral form of government works. So I will, over the next few months, be explaining the facts of how these governments work and just basically facts so you see what does a Board of Finance do, what does a mayor do, what do the selectmen do, etc. And then you'll be more informed. I will also show some films from that I took from Tarrington of finance board meeting, selectmen meetings, things like that, so that you'll get a feel how these things operate. There's a lot of, uh, basically there's a lot of confusion because most people don't understand how mayoral form works. Once they do understand it, they'll be better informed and can, and then uh, may affect the voting at the uh, polls. The mayor is now, the present mayor, they call the present mayor a weak mayor because he wasn't elected by the, um, by the uh, electors as mayor. He was elected as a selectman and then, was a, then was, it was appointed as mayor by the rest of the selectmen. So the mayor is now chosen by the selectmen. The Board of Education is in charge of the Gilbert High School grades 9 through 12. It's a private high school, so you know there's a little confrontation there between a Board of Education and the Gilbert School Trust, and uh, that's pretty complex. I can't explain it here. It would take me a few programs to do that. don't even all under totally understand it, but uh, the Gilbert School has been lo losing students over the years. And, uh, they're, they're, and their test scores are not the best in the state, that's for sure. Number two, K through eight, kindergarten through the eighth grade, that's split over three schools. The bachelor school, which is uh, K through six, kindergarten through sixth grade. Hinsdale school, which is kindergarten through sixth grade and Pearson School, which is 6th through 8th grade, and that's where we are now fixing the OCR complaints that we have from the state. If we don't get them done by next year, we will be fined, but my guess is one way or another, they will be fixed. The chairman of the Board of Education is chosen by the elected members. The approximate mayoral statistics from 1931, when we first had our first mayor, to 1963, We've had permanent mayor, uh, mayors, six permanent mayors, and they average 5.5 years. So that answers one of the questions that was brought up at the Charter Revision Commission the other night about the turnover of people. And the mayoral form we had to begin with until 1963, we averaged 5.5 years, and then we had one interim with, with a 1.0 a year uh, he, 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 he came in, it was maybe even less than a year, he came in when the first mayor died in office. He was the only one to die in office. I'd also like to point out that when you have a mayor, they usually last unless they die or for some other reason. Uh, when they, when, they, when they, that mayor uh, moves out of office because another mayor was elected, then the next mayor starts right away. So there's no time frame between one starting and one going. But if you, if you take these and you add and divide by seven, you get a five-year average for the seven mayors that we had in the early days. And by the way, the Torrington average since 1924, their mayoral form started in 1924, I think it's 24, it might be 21, but they average five years over those years. Now, some of them, like one of these, was in for like eight years or six years, and some in Torrington were in for 10 years. And One mayor in Torrington was in for almost 14, but he did have some um, some uh, time off between some of his terms. Um, the approximate town ma uh, manager statistics, and these are unofficial, I got them from the town office, but I always say unofficial because we always get somebody who calls me and says you missed the period or cross your T or dot your I or whatever, so I always say it's unofficial. If you want uh, the information, get it yourself, but uh, April 1962 through April of 2008, 
46 years we've had town managers and uh, 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 selectmen, town manager, mayor, form of government. In those years, there were 13 permanent town managers. So 94% of the time, i.e. 43 years, we've had permanent town managers. The average term was 3.3 years. Now I want to point out to you that it takes a little time to get a town manager because if a town manager leaves or, or whatever for any reason, you have to go out and search for another one in most cases. That takes, let's say, three to four months. And then the town manager has to get up to speed. So that takes another three or four months once he gets to town. Unless he's somebody who really knows the town well and has served in the town and, and he can take a little, uh, a little less time to get up to speed. So when, it, when we say the average is 3.3 years, it really comes down to like 2.7, but you know, productive time. So um, this 3.3 even is, is a far cry from the five-year average of the mayors in either Torrington or the early days of Winchester. Now this is the interesting slide. I always like to put this up. We had, we've had 13 acting interim town managers, and that's 6% of the time. I get 0.6%, but it's 6% of the time. And the total is 2.75 years. So for almost three years of, of the time frame between the start and, and, and today, uh, we didn't have a permanent town manager. And these interim ones usually act when one, when a town manager leaves the office and we need to have somebody temporarily until we get our next permanent town manager. So if you add all these together, 13 and 13, uh, you get 26, and the average term then with all the months and everything is 2.7 uh, months, well, I'm sorry, 2.7 months uh, is the average of an interim town manager. So whenever we have an interim town manager, they last about 2.7 months. And this basic information has been provided by the town hall. So you're talking here about, and Mrs. Capabianca, Heather Capabianca mentioned it at the meeting the other night, you're talking about stability in town management. The mayoral form from these statistics has about a five year uh, stability the town manager form about 3.3 and then in the mayoral form you, the mayor start right away when the other one finishes in the town manager form you have to go through a period of trying to find a town manager interview several candidates hire a town manager check their backgrounds out and they get them in and then they take time to get up to speed now of course mayors take time to get up to speed too but uh, um, usually it's a little quicker because of the way uh, the, the form works uh, with a separate finance board and a separate uh, set of selectmen. Okay, the board of selectmen for 203, 205, I want to show you these, the little bit of the history here so you can see some of the tumult we have here in the town manager situation. Uh, in 203, 205, we elected Marianne Welcome mayor. She was a Democrat, is a Democrat, and she's an educator. As you know, I'm not in favor of educators being the mayor, but uh, she was elected mayor, and um, her previous experience was eight years on the board of selectmen. I think they used to call her the quiet selectmen in those days. Now, Thea Perez, a Democrat, was an uh, educator, still is. Previous experience, board of selectmen, no years at that time in 2003, 2005. Since then, she has been on the board of selectmen. Barbara Wilkes. Independent, retired from business. I don't know exactly what business she was in, but she is retired from business. And she has previous experience of uh, zero years before this Board of Selectmen, on the Board of Selectmen. And then Paul O'Mara, I got independent and Republican here because he was, he was uh, and I'll talk a bit more about it, he was elected as an part uh, the new independent party. And then after three or four months, he uh, was dissatisfied with his situation, so he moved to the Republican Party. And this is important because it changed the complexion of this board when he made that move. Once he made the move, the Republicans were then in the majority. Until then, they were in a de facto minority. Paul O'Mara is a businessman. 
previous experience on the Board of Selectmen, uh, zero years. Uh, he served, I had question mark here because I didn't know at the time I made the slide yesterday, but three to four months before, before uh, three to four months as an independent from the independent party and then switched to the Republican Party for the re remainder of his term. Marie Pirelli, that was her name at the time, she's since married, a Republican businesswoman, previous experience on the Board of Selection, zero years. And Linda Calavecchio, who since moved to Florida, a Republican businesswoman, previous experience, Board of Selectmen, two years. And David Capabianca, Republican business uh, businessman, uh, previous experience, Board of Selectmen, four years. In 2003-05, that's the last Board of Selectmen I just went through, the newly formed Independent Party ran on a low tax platform. They had many other things on their platform, but what stood out the most was they were running for uh, on a low tax platform. And they won two seats on the Board of Selectmen. And that was uh, kind of a first for this town in my lifetime anyway. But uh, they, had, uh, they had a new party, the Independent Party, formed by ex-members of the Democratic Party of the unaffiliated people and maybe even some Republicans in there. But uh, they formed a party and they ran a slate. And they, they not only won some seats on the selectmen, but they won some on the Board of Education. I'm not talking about the Board of Education tonight because I have to do justice to this uh, uh, mayoral um, so, uh, selectmen town manager forms of government. Maybe some other time we'll talk about the Board of Selection. That's a zoo that'll take me a few programs to get through. But the Democrats ran on a very general platform. They tend to run on general platforms. They usually don't have specific things they're going to do. They just generalize, generalize and uh, normally. Uh, sometimes, as you'll see later, they do have one or two specific things they want to achieve. But it's usually keep the lake clean, clean up the town, you know, have better schools. That's what I call general uh, platform. And uh, they won, the Democrats won two seats on the board. That was um, uh, Marianne Welcome and Althea Perez. The Republicans won three seats on the board. The independents and Democrats, and this is Brian's view, formed a coalition and de facto majority and elected Mary Ann Welcome, Democrat, to be mayor. Now remember, she had already been on the Board of Selectmen for many years, so that was kind of uh, uh, a good step for that de facto uh, majority if you, if you believe in educators being mayors. This board hired a new town manager named Stephen Angelo. He was a Democrat to replace the previous town manager, Margaret Johnson. I don't have her affiliation, but what, what I want to show you is here is we hired a new town manager to replace the old town manager who had resigned just before the election or right around the election sometime, Margaret Johnson. I think she was around for about six years, so Margaret was here for a while. And she probably worked under different boards. Uh, different uh, persuasions. One independent, Paul O'Mara, eventually switched to the Republican Party. So here you've got some interesting things happening. You've got one town manager coming to replace one who resigned, and you have an independent new party person, Paul O'Mara, switching to the Republican Party and giving them the majority for the remainder of the term after three or four months. Now you can see here that had he run as a Republican, they probably would have had a Republican mayor. You know, I don't know. But uh, anyway, that's what happened. That's history. Can't change it. So he did switch. And then the philosophy of the board changed dramatically as a result. During the Republican majority, while the majority was running for the, uh, for the rest of the term, Steve and Angelo, in trying to satisfy their needs, <laughs> fell into disfavor with a minority and announced a possible resignation if the majority lost the election. Which, in the end, he did do, because the majority 
uh, did lose the election, the Republicans, they didn't lose, they still got some seats on the next board, but they didn't, they were no longer the majority. So Stephen Angelo resigned. Now, so you have Margaret Johnson resigning, the end of one term, you have Stephen Angelo being uh, a Democrat, being brought in by the de facto majority, uh, the Democrats and the Independents, and then you have Steve Angelo announcing he's going to resign before the term was even over. So uh, it's, it's a very interesting uh, set of events. He actually did resign because the Board of Selectmen 205-207 was, again, these are elected people, Marianne Welcome, the Democrat. She was, again, chosen by the Selectmen to be mayor because they had a de facto majority. She was still an educator. The, uh, I think she works at the Gilbert School as a history teacher and maybe teaches other things too. Uh, previous experience, the Board of Selectmen now is up to 10 years because she had the two years as mayor as well. And she has past experience of two years as mayor. Althea Perez, Democrat, she also won. She's the, still an educator, previous experience, Board of Selectmen, two years. Barbara Wilkes returned. She was the independent, an independent. She retired from business, uh, as I said earlier, and her previous experience now is up to two years on this board because she was on the last one. And then a new independent was also elected. The independents won, won kind of won a lot of seats on this board because of uh, the events of the previous board. Uh, so David C. Villa was an independent. And uh, he won. He's a businessman. I think he worked for the state, but I'm not positive. But I think he uh, does, uh, has other business interests in his uh, in the later years. Uh, his previous experience as board of selectmen was zero years. Uh, uh, and uh, after three months in office on this board of selectmen, David Villa resigned uh, for a personal reason. So he was there for three months on this board of selectmen before resigning for personal reasons. Arthur Melcher, another independent, so that's the third one, Wilkes, Villa, and Melcher, won uh, the election. He was a businessman, I think he's in construction, and uh, his previous experience on the Board of Selectmen was zero years. Then there was Jay Case, a Republican businessman who won his first term, so he had no experience on the Board of Selectmen. And David Kapiank was back again. As a Republican, he's a businessman, previous experience on the Board of Selectmen now is six years. Two years for this term will make it eight years. So he was on for six years. So you have uh, some experience here, Marianne Welcome on for ten years or so, and, uh, and David Bianca on for six years from different parties, of course. Uh, Russell Dutton Buckner, an independent. Uh, He's a businessman, and uh, he consults around to companies that need help um, in their management, and uh, he travels quite a bit as a result of that. But he's a businessman, uh, and previous experience on the Board of Selectmen was zero years. He served one year and nine months because he replaced the other independent, David C. Villa. So on 205, 207, the independents ran on a low tax platform, plus another good platform. They had a good platform. Um, they wanted to help uh, make the schools run more efficiently, and they had a lot of things they wanted to do. And they won three seats on the board. So that was uh, the heyday for up to now for the independent party. The Democrats won on the general election and won two seats on the board. Perez and Welcome. The Republicans won two seats, Case and Capabianca. A majority of the selectmen, four of them, were Highland Lake residents, and I think that's had a kind of a significant impact on our, our town. And I wouldn't advise that in the future, to have four out of seven selectmen from the, from 25% from of the tax base. That's, even though I live on the lake, I don't think that's right. I think we're better represented now, and I'll talk about that when we get to this, this existing board. The 
three independents unofficially this is Brian's view again sided with the two Democrats initially to form a de facto majority to elect and to elect Mary Ann Welcome again the Democrat mayor so here you have a de facto majority of five on, on a lot of the major issues, and they didn't vote with on all the issues that way, but, and um, and two, and a minority of the two Republicans, and um, they formed this uh, de facto majority to vote together on many issues, especially board and commission appointments. I personally think that's hurt the town a bit over the last uh, uh, few years, but anyway, that happened and it needs to be corrected by the existing Board of Selectmen and future Board of Selectmen. Nothing against the people that serve on the commissions, but I think they're a little out of balance now and we need a little more balance. We don't want too many people from one side of the normal distribution curve on either side now of the normal distribution curve. We need balanced commissions. And against the Republicans on many of the major issues. Their first major difference was the acceptance of the inevitable, inevitable resignation of the town manager. Surprise, surprise. He did resign. Steve Angelo, he was in from 12 to 03, if my information is right, to 11 to 05. That's when the election happens, by the way, in November. So, And seek a new town manager. The de facto majority did not seem to favor the major development projects along Route 8. They never said they didn't favor the projects, but most of their actions spoke louder than words, and most people think that they were not in favor the, of, the, uh, of these developments. Didn't do much to help them, let's put it that way. The de facto majority favored a large bond package, $43 million, give or take a little, plus 13 million in interest over 20 years. The Republicans minority were not in favor of this bond package, but didn't have enough votes. I think about $100,000 was spent during this on this bond package, roughly, in uh, studies, hiring consultants, things like that. This bond package, in my view, wouldn't produce a penny in revenue and was difficult for many reasons for the residents to swallow. The residents were not, in my view, um, weren't in favor of this bond package, and I think they proved that in the next election. Some people say now, well, we never did take the bond package to the residents for a vote. Well, we did. It, did, it was a major issue in the last election, and the people that were in favor of the bond package took a real drubbing in the last election. During their term, two of the selected selectmen resigned from the independent party, Wilkes and Melcher, along with other elected officials and a few appointed officials, and eventually formed a new political party called the Winchester Party that mainly consisted of Highland Lake District residents. Not totally, but you know that was the large majority and the moving force behind the Highland Lake, uh, the um, Winchester Party. Selectman Dutton Buckner did not, well he was an independent, he did not join them and fu finished out his term as an independent. So now we have three parties, three political parties, in this board of selectmen. Republicans, the people that left the independent party hadn't quite formed the Winchester party and might have towards the towards the end of the uh, term, and this independent Russell Dutton Buckner. Russell Dutton Buckner also uh, voted a bit, decided a bit with the Republicans on major issue towards the end of that term. One of the problems with the bond issue, it was going to levy a heavy tax for 20 years on the on the uh, residents, and I don't think Russell Dutton, Dutton Buckner was in favor of that. 
um, ten percent tax average, or say or so for twenty years, is pretty tough for this town to swallow. And they just had a big reevaluation, and uh, also the uh, last bond issue for the roads and things was kicking in as well this year. Okay, so that's what happened there. So again, you see some turmoil here. You see the independents at the beginning getting three people placed on this because of the dissatisfaction with the past. You see the town manager resigning and a quest for a new town manager. And actually a new town manager, I didn't put it on here, but they did find a new town manager from Torrington, Owen Quinn, who was also a Democrat. And uh, they hired him. So during their term, we get a town manager leaving and a new town manager um, uh, coming to town uh, that had different philosophies. So uh, Margaret Jansen had a different philosophy, uh, and then uh, we the other next two town managers had different philosophies. So um, that's what happened during that term. So plenty of turmoil there. Not only that, not only did the independents get in in the election. But then they three, uh, two of the three dropped out of their party that uh, they got in, and over time formed a new party called the Winchester Party, and we had three different parties uh, with different philosophies on the Board of Selectmen. It was quite interesting, with a new town manager, and you know, as town managers go, they usually have to kind of go with, by the way, the uh, dropping out of the independent party did not change the de facto majority because uh, the de facto majority was then four and three uh, kind of on most issues three were in the minority Buckner and the two Republicans although the Buck uh, Buckner could vote either way uh, if he wanted to so they still had that and uh, the town manager Owen Quinn was in working with three parties on this board of, of directors, <laughs> selectmen. So he had a committee managing him with three different parties on it, with three different philosophies. So he uh, did what he thought was best, and um, and he served out that term. The 207-209 election, that's the group of selectmen we're in right now, there was an election, and mainly because of the dismay of the public with the situation, there was a lot of bickering on the board, there was a lot of uh, sniping, uh, there were a lot of people, uh, especially the educators, recusing themselves a lot, they weren't voting on a lot of issues, and the meetings were going on forever, and there were a lot of presentations made, and the public was kind of uh, disgusted with that, and they also felt that perhaps uh, some of the people didn't do some of the things they said they were going to do in their platform when they were elected, as I'm, I'm told by people. The prospect of a large 20-year bond package, about $43 million plus $13 million in interest, for projects that would help the town, the school renovations and a police station and the fire department, but not produce a penny in revenue, that which we need very, very, we need that badly, that, um, that uh, was not, didn't make uh, these people too popular. The impending large property revaluation for many taxpayers, especially those at Highland Lake and in Winchester, the town of Winchester, where the values are higher, the uh, uh, property values are higher, that that made people think twice too about uh, tax increases and and bond issues. So there was a, there was kind of a mood there uh, changing in the town. A position a position believed by many to be against the major proposed development opportunities. Uh, people felt they weren't moving fast enough, uh, things weren't happening, and maybe uh, they could be moved along faster, and perhaps these people may not be in favor of these, this extra, uh, these extra developments. That was a, a worry in town. I'm not saying people were against it. I don't know that one way or the other. People sometimes profess to be in favor of things, but down deep they're not. So there's some politics be played all the time here. Someday, when all these developments are in and they're producing all the money, everybody will take credit for these developments. They'll all take credit for it. You know? And uh, we do have some problems, of course, and we will have problems until the last penny is earned from taxes, but uh, those are things you have to deal with uh, uh, along the way. The public elected, because of all these things, the public elected five Republicans that ran on a, a pro-revenue uh, 
and uh, growth platform. And they ran as businessmen. All five of them are businessmen. So they ran on a uh, pro-revenue growth platform that was against the large bond package and in favor of the major proposed residential developments. They also promised to work closer with the Board of Education in an effort to efficiently maintain the schools. So we wouldn't get in the pickle we're in now where we have a lot of OCR complaints and a lot of schools that haven't been maintained in many, many years and we needed a, a huge bond package uh, to help get those schools put back into um, reasonable shape, according to the people that were supporting the bond package. Other people don't totally agree with that. I think there's probably less work there than was portrayed, and probably less of a need right now for some of the things than was portrayed. They also, uh, they promised to present a mayoral form of government alternative to the voters of Winstead. That was one of their campaign promises, that if promised they would try, they were, they were tired of the, uh, the change, chopping and changing uh, of the town managers all the time, adding and subtracting. So they um, said they will try to put forward a mayoral form of government for the electors to decide. That doesn't mean we'll get a mayoral form of government, but the electors will have to be educated by these Republicans and they will have to know how a mayoral form works and then they'll get to vote on it. November 4th, I think it is, uh, at the same time as the natural, national election. The Democrats uh, won the other two seats on a general platform that was not in favor of the proposed development opportunities. Now, they didn't come out and say we're against these developments, but you know there was the feeling that uh, they talked a lot about it on TV and this and that, and uh, that they were against these developments, wanted to slow them down and perhaps not have them at all. Developments are important to us, as I said on the last programs, because they will bring in millions and millions of dollars of additional tax revenue that will allow us to rejuvenate our town. They promised uh, a, uh, they were in favor of the bond issue, very much in favor of the bond issue. And they were in favor, at least one of them, I think both of them are, but uh, it was one of the selectmen pushed very hard in his platform for energy efficiency over the years. And everybody's in favor of that. Energy efficiency takes a long, long time and costs quite a bit of money, so that won't be something that happens overnight. But they are working, uh, these uh, Democrats, to try to get the town to move as fast as possible, but not recklessly, <laughs> on energy conservation. They did try to get an energy commission set up since they've been elected. That's been turned down twice so far because the Republicans don't believe too much at commissions, um, only when necessary ad hoc commissions maybe, but they want the town manager and his experts that he uses to solve the energy problem for us, and I'm sure he will. The Winchester Party ran on a similar platform, but did not win any seats. They didn't win a seat on either the Board of Selectmen or the Board of Education. The Republicans won eight seats, five Oh, Every one they ran for, they won. They won on the uh, five seats for the uh, selectmen and three seats on the Board of Education. Now, I just want to say here for you at the lake who aren't here in the, in the uh, winter and don't always watch this program, that when I am not in favor of any particular party, I'm in favor of businessmen getting elected into these positions, including the chairmanship of the Board of Education, because I think that's a business problem, not an education problem. And I did push on my program for one independent party member, one Democrat, and one unaffiliated uh, candidate that were running for office. Unfortunately, none of them three won, Matter of fact, I also pushed for one taxpayer association representative. So I had, I was uh, encouraging people to vote for four other business people that did not belong to the Republican Party. 
Uh, once uh, the Winchester Party ran a similar platform but not win any seats on either the Board of Selectmen or the Board of Education, the Republicans took a large uh, command, five of the seats. That just goes to show you how um, how eager the, the town was to change the Board of Selectmen and do things a different way and um, these promises they had in their platform. So, because the Republicans won, the de facto majority went away, and the philosophy changed back again. So when the Board of Selectmen came in, Board of Selectmen, 207-209, Kenneth Fracasso, Republican, a mayor, businessman, pre the experience zero, David Capabianca, businessman, pre the experience eight years on the Board of Selectmen, He's now the uh, vice chairman of the Board of Selectmen, and uh, Kenneth Fracasso, the mayor, is the chairman that was voted on by the Selectmen. Michael Ham III, Republican, saying, businessman, no experience before. Gene Berlinski, Republican, businessman, no experience before on the Board of Selectmen. Well, all these people, by the way, from all the parties have plenty of experience on commissions and committees, but I didn't go into that tonight because I'm talking about the Board of Selectmen. Jeffrey Liskin, Republican, businessman, previous experience on the board, zero. Althea Perez, Democrat, she's in a minority now. Educator, previous experience, board of selectmen, four years. These two years now will make it six for her. Michael Renzullo, Democrat, I put him down as a businessman. I don't know how much business experience he's got, but I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, I know he works as a salesman now, but... Uh, I'm not sure about before that. He seems to be running for office all the time, so I'm a little confused about that because I think he should be trying to help run the town as a selectman and spend less time running for other offices. But good luck to him. If he wins, he wins, and uh, then the Democrats will appoint somebody else in his place. So progress today for this re uh, businessman-led uh, board of selectmen. Uh, they, had, they had a lot of things on their platform, not just what I mentioned tonight, but they believe in a specific platform, measurable, that you can say, we're going to do this, and in two years we can measure whether they did it or not. A little harder on a Democrat's side to do that. Matter of fact, we can see they did not get the bond issue, so they lost on one major issue already. Uh, they will succeed on getting um, a better energy con conservation. I'm sure that'll happen because everybody agrees with that. It's just very difficult to get. It takes a long, long time. It's like the developments. Nothing can be expected for many years, and it will cost some money up front. This Board of Selectmen stopped the large bond issue, so we were saved that. Uh, for then they, uh, they accepted the resignation. Here we go again. Uh, they accepted the resignation of the existing town manager, Owen Quinn, Democrat, and immediately hired an interim town manager, Bruce Grezik. Uh, he was here for about three months, I think, uh, to sit in for the town manager while they, while they searched for a new one. They wanted a town manager, as I understand it, that um, agreed more with their approach to things and, um, and had uh, more of their sort of uh, suasion on how to do things. And uh, that's what they went out and searched for. And um, that was uh, something that happened there. They placed the highest priority there were many high priorities, but there were many emergencies and many fires to put out, but they placed the highest priority on obtaining additional revenue for the town. That means additional taxpayers, that means backing the uh, developments that are trying to come to town, residential developments, getting more factories in, getting, uh, getting more um, uh, businesses in, retail businesses in, getting more people to come to this area so that our, we have more people to share the burden that we have uh, in the town of Winstead in catching up with all the mistakes of the past and for some of the wants we have for the future. They placed a higher priority on revenue from the proposed residential developments and the development of the Route 8 Enterprise Corridor between Winstead and Torrington. They actually provided some funding for that, which is rare. Most most boards of elections don't provide much funding for uh, uh, for this emphasis. They placed uh, 
They replaced the previous appointed planning and zoning chairman for reasons of their own after much consideration and deliberation. They placed an emphasis on funding an evolutionary approach to the plan of conservation and development update and adoption with the state. All these things they consider necessary to get more residential revenue and added taxpayers into town, which will take many years uh, at best, if it happens at all. They soon formed a new, more politically balanced school building committee to address the OCR complaints at the Pearson School. They formed a balanced charter revision commission to consider a mayority form of government. They replaced the labor attorney for efficiency and less cost and uh, uh, attempting to reestablish a full-time, they are attempting to reestablish a full-time recreation director and fire marshal. The recreation uh, uh, director, I'll let it mention on the last Board of Select, was a very controversial issue. They wanted to reduce that position and did to part-time. And the town felt that they needed a full-time recreation director. That is in the budget that is going through the approval process now, it may or may not get approved, but they're going to try their best. It was a campaign promise to re reinstate both the rec director and the fire marshal. We need a fire marshal pretty bad full time. We may not get it. Depends on how people vote on the budget. They hired a new town manager, Keith Robbins. So what you're seeing here is a pattern of a different town manager for every board of selectmen. Uh, and that is counterproductive. There's no... no uh, no argument with that. Um, not arguing about Keith Robinson's qualifications or anything. It's just that if you change town managers every time you change selectmen, that doesn't help. They resolved the Pearson oil tank issue with no penalty. That was outstanding from the previous Board of Selectmen. And they in introduced long-term financial planning into the goals and objectives of the new town manager. Now, personally, I wanted to get this information to you people at the lake and to the rest of the people in town because over the next few months I'm going to be talking more about this. I'm going to shorten up my selectman meeting uh, uh, agenda and add more about uh, the mayoral versus town manager form of governments in the future. And uh, I wanted you to know this because although you live in other states and other cities and other countries uh, and come to the lake in the summer, you can vote in any uh, in an issue that has money attached to it. You can't vote for the president here. You can't vote for the selectmen here. But when anything, a bond issue or anything that has money, so I want you all to know that we need the revenue. We need to get an efficient government to help us get the revenue. And even if we stay with a town manager selectman, you need to help us get the revenue because this is additional revenue that's going to help save this town and make it uh, uh, competitive. Thank you very much. Next week. I'll be back, and we'll be talking about the selectman meeting, a shortened version, and I think I'll show you a, a, a movie next week of, of the Torrington uh, Councilman meeting, which is like our selectman meeting. Thank you.